Hey, good morning, everyone. Okay, and then we will get started. So first of all, I want to uh, give you a summary of chapter one. Um, but before that, uh, does anyone have a question? Um, I do. Okay, very good. Yes, go ahead. Um, I was wondering for the math Excel, I had um, registered and paid the uh -huh. um, six month fee yep. and mm -hmm. I did the orientation mm -hmm. and then I, yeah. Yeah. I had um, watched the video notes and tried to do chapter one of math Excel mm -hmm. and I tried to log in and they said I needed to register again and I changed my password and everything I just do I just contact math Excel um, let me double check Rebecca I think I can I could quickly double check it for you see if okay. you can account or not. Um, I open the other computer and then so just give me one second. It should be one time registration. So um, if you register once, it should be good. But uh, let me just quickly check that. So far, most of you guys already signed on to the system. Let's see. Yes, I see. I see you are in the account, Rebecca. So shouldn't be a problem. Maybe you went to the wrong website. So the website is always www.mathexcel.com, right? You should yeah. go to the Pearson website because that could be a, because we're not using the, the main Pearson website. Although the product belong to the Pearson company, but uh, yeah, we, we under the, uh, I think it's, it's like a sub, sub website of the Pearson company. So if you go there and you know, put in username and password, you should be able to log in. But uh, um, maybe let's do this. If you still encounter any issue, you know, you can talk to me after class. I would definitely um, help you out. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, no problem. Okay, anybody else have an issue or anything with, uh, with the course or with the homework system? Okay, I think most of you guys already finished the orientation session, which is, uh, which is a good thing. It basically just show you how to use the system. So nothing, uh, nothing technical, right, yet. Okay, so um, we're gonna talk about the, I'm gonna quickly summarize the um, chapter one. So um, just pinpoint some important terms, you know, you need to pay attention. And I guess we go from there. So uh, today we're gonna talk about the summary of chapter one. I'm just mentioning a couple of important terms, you know, now you should pay attention to those. Chapter one is intro to statistics. So one of the most important terms is statistics. And then here statistics has multiple layers of meanings. And as a, as a, Major one of one of major branch of the mathematics, statistics is a science, right? Of conducting study to of conducting study of collecting. So basically, you start with collecting the data, summarizing the data. analyzing the data and draw conclusion from the data. So this is the, um, basically the essence of the statistics um, to conclusion from data. So it's kind of a um, strict science and uh, with the mathematics, you know, embedded in the nature, so that's the essence of the of statistics. And also, uh, we have an important term called variable. And typically, when you think of the variable, it just basically variable could represent any number. So it's like characteristics. I could take um, or attribute. Typically, we're talking about um, a number, numerical number um, that could take 
different values. Like in the algebra course, you learn x, right? x is a variable. So x could take any values, right? For example, like a numerical value. So x could be two or x could be five, right? Something like that. So x could be any uh, random number we are trying to analyze. Okay. So this is two important terms. Make note of that. And also data, right? We, we have to deal with the data. So data usually come from data set. So data is a, it's a value. That variable could take. So as I mentioned, so uh, data come from data set. And data set come from the survey. Typically, you conduct a survey or, uh, or study or experiment, and then you observe the, the subjects we, we trying to study, and then you collect the, the data from those subjects. So this we try to make connection between the, the survey. So that's like the tool we utilize to collect the data. And then once you collect the data, you form a data set, right? So data set is a collection of all data values. Okay. And we also have two important terms. So one of them is population. So population includes all subjects, right? In the survey or within a general population, so um, includes all subjects. Being studied. And then sample, okay, so sample is a small group coming from the population. So sample is a group of subject Selected from the population. Group of subjects or subset. Typically, you can view that as a subset. Sample is a subset of the population selected from the population. So, sample belong to population. Right, sample belongs to population. And sample is a subset of the population. I will help you clarify the relationship between the sample and population, right? Those two terms are very important. And all of these terms are already listed in from the PowerPoint, also the um, also the lecture videos. So I just give you a, you know a summary of the entire chapter. So nothing new, right? And then we have two major branches in the statistics. One of them is called descriptive statistics. So descript descriptive statistics deals with uh, consists of collecting so basically on the from the first five chapters we will concentrate on the descriptive statistics so we will learn how to um, collecting data collection organization summarization And presenting data. Um, Hi, sorry, I just have a question. Sure. Um, yeah. So 
we basically do like a little summary of the chapter mm -hmm. on Monday class and then we go into the Excel, um, Excel program and yeah. there's videos that we watch. No, no, no. Actually, no. Uh, for Excel, I will show you myself. There's okay. no video for that. So, uh, so every Monday, I will show you some of the Excel operations of, and then you, you'll be able to learn directly from me. Oh, okay. So chapter one, we're just learning right now from you. Um, no, actually, you should also watch the PowerPoint, also the lecture videos, right? Okay. I'm okay. just giving you like, uh, I just want to pinpoint down important terms to help you, you know, navigate through the chapter. Okay. All right. Um, yep. So or every Wednesday, right, you spend time, you know, uh, if you need to read a textbook, do that, read a textbook and uh, <clears throat> go over the lecture PowerPoint and also the lecture videos. And the PowerPoint's on Blackboard? Yeah, everything's okay. on the Blackboard. Let me show you um, where to find those, just in case you missed that part. That's important. So uh, let me go to the our Blackboard course. So once you log into the Blackboard and go to our course, okay. To two, section 301 and right here under the um, follow the course guide right in terms of um, the due date on those homework assignments and then due date of um, of the each chapter and then lecture videos and PowerPoint so this we are on chapter one and chapter two right now so um, click on chapter one lecture video there are three video, three different videos from the three different sections. So you should definitely go over that. And then you can click on this. This is the, this attached file is a PowerPoint. And then if you just click on this, it will just take you to the uh, YouTube video link, right? It'll take you to the YouTube directly. Right, and then um, also you can click on this, right? We'll start a YouTube video right away. This. Okay, and so, and then yeah that's so the powerpoint is attached here so definitely by this wednesday you should complete all these videos right go over all these videos and then also go over all powerpoint um yeah thank you i just forgot I'm, where to locate that okay, okay no problem yeah I, i'll remind you along the way um, in terms of uh, reading those powerpoint and then uh, the lecture videos and also, um, since we already in the Blackboard course, let me show you. I already posted the first Excel project. And we're going to go over that when I finish the summary. And yeah, this is the file itself. And then once you complete the Excel project, you also submit it here, right? You can attach the Excel file and then upload it and submit it, right? And then I will get it and then I will grade it and get back to you, okay? So that's where you find the Excel project. Also, that's where you upload your uh, completed project. And yeah, so Excel practice. I usually have, I post some Excel practice here. So lab one practice, I already posted. And we're going to use this lab one practice as a demonstration uh, to help you, you know, understand how to complete those questions from the Excel project number one. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions on this? Okay. Yeah, how many projects do we have this um, semester? Typically between five to six, right? I, I mentioned five, it should be about five um, based on it. Uh, if we, if you guys finish early, we can have extra project, but uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be about five. Okay. Um, how, are we have the projects on top of the math Excel work that we're doing each week? Yes. Is that is yeah. it related to it or just different? Oh, they are related, definitely. You are um you are utilizing whatever you learn from the, the content and to complete the projects. So they are closely related. Right. So doing the homework definitely help you understand a lot of things in the Excel. Uh, but you're gonna learn some, you know, how to use a formula or how to create a, uh, the graphs from the data set, something like that. Okay, does that make sense? So it's not totally isolated, right? They are they are.
closely related to each other. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, any other question? Okay, so that's, uh, let's go back to the summary part and then let um, me make a pretty brief summary. So, inf so collecting data, organizing data, summarizing data and presenting data. And that's what we are doing in the descriptive statistics and in the inferential statistics uh, after uh, from chapter seven, eight and 10, we'll focus on inferential statistics So we will use the sample statistics to make prediction to make the prediction about the population perimeter perimeter to make the prediction about the population perimeter. So you are predicting the population using the sample, right? That's what basically we are doing. Okay. All right. So this is two major branches and we have uh, different tools of collecting data, right? Like um, tools we utilize to collect the data. We could do survey, right? And I'm pretty sure everybody knows what survey is usually you receive a lot of emails telling you to fill out a survey. You they, they give you like gift card or something like that. And that's a that's a way of collecting data, usually from the business or, or the government organization. And then we also have poll, very famous one, uh, Gallup poll, right? They collect a lot of professional data, and they come up with a, um, a lot of conclusions from those data sets. And also um, something we are familiar with is sensors. So every 10 years, you know, the US, US government will collect data from every, every, every uh, citizen of the United States. So this is what sensor is, census is, right? And a lot of different tools. You could use experiment. Usually in the um, biological field or medical field, they use a lot of experiment to collect data and analyze the data, come up with the different, like they publish the research study result from those uh, data set. And yeah, that's um, all those important tools used to collect the data, but a survey is more, uh, most common ones. And probably you already encountered this um, very frequently I'll fill out a survey for a research study. Okay. So, um, and one more thing is perimeter. So perimeter is a numerical measurement describing some characteristics of the population. So it's a numerical measurement, meaning we only deal with the new um, numbers, right? Numerical measurement. describing some characteristics of the population. Okay. And then, uh, so perimeter is mainly used for population, right? So they are corresponding relationships. So it's used to describe the population and statistics is a numerical measurement, a numerical number. You can also put in that way numerical measurement used to capture some characteristics of this sample or describing some characteristics. characteristics. And we spell the characteristics. Yeah. Characteristics of the sample. 
So the statistics mainly used to capture the sample. Okay, so that's why we, we have termed sample statistics and population perimeter. Okay. Uh, population perimeter. And then sample statistics. And then in terms of a characterization of the data, right? Data could be characterized as a quantitative, meaning numerical data. Typically numerical, meaning we're using a number of numerical data and also qualitative. Quantitative data could be like the, the weight of NFL players, right? Um, anything dealing with the numbers, that's quantitative. And then qualitative data is non numerical, could be the hair of your cup, the hair colors, uh, the gender of the baby, something like that. It's just basically categorical, right? You can also say categorical data. And that's, yeah, so that's most important, you know, characterization of the data, right? So, and we also use the different sampling techniques to collect, to collect the data, right? For the sample, so sampling techniques. Um, there's four major uh, sampling techniques. The first one is systematic. Systematic, yeah. So you're basically selecting a starting point. So really easy to collect the data. Picking a starting point and then after and choose every Cape member. Afterwards. So for example, let's say you have a data set population, right? Let's say it's one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 12, 13. So let's say you're using this as starting point. So we're picking um, number three, and then we picking every, every fourth number after that. So the next number we are picking will be first, second, third, fourth, right? 11. So this is every fourth data afterwards, right? So let's say you have, and based on that, you come up with a, a sample, assuming this is an entire population. So that's how you pick in a sample from, pick, pick a sample from population. So this population, so your sample data could be three, 11, right? And move forward. So this is, First method, which is pretty, um, which is pretty effective uh, to pick a, a fairly smaller sample from the population, and depends on your needs, right? Depends on the size of the population, then you decide. Um, it could be fourth member, it could be tenth member, right? It could be every twentieth member, or may, maybe every hundredth member. Let's say you have a humongous amount of the population. Then you probably want to pick a, um, picking the sample uh, carefully. Okay. And then uh, second sampling technique is called convenience. 
Okay, so user result, which which are easy to to get, right? So basically, if you let's say you live in a living in a living in a building, right? So in, in order to conduct a survey about New York City, you know, adults, you you just collect the data from the from the members or from your neighbors. That's what we call the comedians sampling technique. That are easy. That are easy to get. So basically, you collect the data you based on comedians. Okay. Third one is stratify. Sampling techniques. So you subdivide a population into at least two subgroup. Um, so subdivide the population into at least two subgroups. And I collect the data from each subgroup. So for example, let's say you want to conduct a survey about New York City residents. So you basically just subdivide the entire um, city into two categories, male and females, and just go out there and then collect data from each group, right? Um, pick a sample from each group. So this is what they call the stratified sampling techniques with a common trait. And the last one is a cluster. Sampling techniques. Uh, so you divide the population into different areas. Uh, you could go by the um, precinct, right? Let's say you want to do the police precinct. So divide the entire New York City in, um, using the precinct. So that, that's what they call a cluster. Um, sampling techniques. So divide the population or another way, another example could be, you know, to survey the New York City residents, you just go to five boroughs, right? So you, um, you just divide the entire city into five boroughs and then go into every borough to collect the data. Okay, into Yes, also call that clusters and draw a sample from each cluster. So that's basically um, all important terms you need to pay attention from uh, chapter one. So any any questions about the chapter one? All right, so yes, yeah, so this is a quick summary of what we need to um, understand in chapter one. And uh, next thing I want to move on to the, um, the Excel project, right? So um, go to our Blackboard course and then open the lab one practice. Okay, so open the file and then we're gonna jump right to that. Okay. So let me open the file right now. So let's open it. And then first of all, take a look at a question really quickly before we get started. Professor, where can I find the lab one practice? Yeah, it's under the right here. Uh, you go to the Excel practice. Okay, got it. And the lab one practice. Okay. Very good. So 
So get that, open that, quickly go over that uh, before we get started. That file. All right, so let's take a look at question number one. So I want you, I want all of you guys open Excel, all right? So, when I opened it, it took me to a, a Microsoft Word file. Yeah, Which it is a Word file, you're right. It is a Word file. Um, <clears throat> I want to show you, you know, most of your project should be in Excel, but uh, the first one, uh, I type up the questions in a word. So, um, yeah, so yeah, it is a word file. So that's right. Okay. So um, let's look at it. So first one, it's about uh, evaluate a function as indicated with your calculator, calculator and then by using Excel. So um, in order to check the result, right? You should use your calculator to check it. So um, for all, all of your project, I want you to do this, right? You definitely need to put on a name. Okay, so your name, you know, put on a name and then also indicate this is um, Excel project number one. Sorry, so even if it's in Word, we should open up our own, like, are we doing it, the work in Word? No, we, we're going to work on it in Excel. Okay. Yeah. So the word, it's just a file. I have to type up the, the formulas and then only the word allow me to do that. So, and that's why I have to type it up in a word. But uh, yeah, so question one. So this is how you complete your project, right? You, you put down your name and you put down the, the project number here, this project number one. and Obviously, this is lab one practice. Your actual lab, actual Excel project number one will look very similar. So you should pay attention to this. Okay, so f of x, right? We're given a function, and this is from the algebra course, six times and three times x minus four, right? Okay. And you want to calculate a couple of things. Let me make it slightly bigger. Okay, you want to calculate f of five. So that means in this algebra expression, we will place x with a five. Okay, so x becomes five. That's a, is that the same? Is that a, that's a different problem than we had? Is it? Um, did you did you open the lab one practice or actual lab one? Um, let me yeah. check. Well, number one is just the f of five. Yeah, and f of negative eight. Six, six, three, x minus four. Yep, that's right. Exactly. No, no, no. It, it's not showing up in the Word document. We don't have that. It just starts with f of five and f of negative eight. Okay, I see. How is that possible? Mine has f of x equals six. Like, mine has the full equation. Okay. Yeah, mine too. Yes. Mine as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess maybe it depends on the the word version, right? If you have an older version of the word. I was on the wrong, I was on the wrong one. That was okay. my fault. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah. And from, from next project, I'll make sure it's in the Excel file. So you don't have to, uh, cause the first one is kind of special. Um, a lot of review from the algebra and then um, you ought to type up all this algebraic expression after you use the word. But uh, from next project, it, it will be in the Excel. So you only need to open one file. Okay. Yeah. So um, if you cannot view the formula, right, you should try to open it um, using different word version, meaning um, right here, let me show you. So you should open in a newer version of the word and then you should, the formula will show up. Okay, so maybe um, re-download it Redownload the file and open it in a, a newer version of the word. And I don't know why, but I, I've been doing that and it, it's not showing up for me. 
still not showing up. Okay. Um, let me see. Um, let me see any way I can share with you the. Okay. Or maybe uh, let me just quickly open this. And I, I'm sure this, or maybe you can take a screenshot, right, of this. Um, yeah, let me, do this. let me yeah, take a screenshot. Um, let me just open this. Yeah. Also, like with my Excel project, all of the formulas are there. So maybe, like, I, I could just base it off of that. I understand. Can you see the lab one practice sheet right now? That's what mine looks like. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah, so take a screenshot and then at least you have the question so you're not getting lost. <laughs> okay. You good? How do we do the multiplication symbol on Excel? Okay, it's a shift and then eight. Hold on shift and then eight at the same time. Okay, I, 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 I was about to talk about that once she finished taking a screenshot. Okay, so right, right here, right? So in order to calculate this, we need to put in, so anytime in order to calculate anything in the Excel, you need to put an equal sign first, right? Including if you want to put in a formula to calculate anything, equal sign is needed. So put an equal sign first. And from there, we start inputting this six times, times, and this multiplication sign. Let me just quickly over this. On a keyboard, we should be shift, hold on shift, and a six and eight at the same time, right? And if you need an exponent sign, exponent symbol should be shift and six. Okay. If you need a dollar sign, right? A shift five. Okay. So basically, dollar sign. I'll quickly give you these important things, important symbols we need. Right? Okay. Try that, see if you can get a multiplication sign, exponent sign, and what else? Minus sign, plus sign, right? So minus sign uh, is a shift and uh, yeah, just right after the zero, right? So, so let's calculate this. So this should be six times, okay, and then three. Now replace x, x becomes five, five minus four. Okay, and that should do it, right? And then you hit enter, you should get the result, okay, 66. And if you wanna double check your result, you could just put into the calculator and then you expect to get the same result, right? And that's f of five. And also sometimes you need to in, enlarge the, the cell. So between the border of this, column B and column C, when you see a, a solid clause coming up, you can just drag it, right? Then you, you'll be able to make it a larger, larger cell, okay? A wider cell, right? Yeah. If you need to do that. And then if you want to resize it, just put a cursor in between the border and then double click on it. And then you will resize it to a proper size, right? And just something, uh, if you want to, um, un undo anything, undo any operations, you just go on to top and then click on undo, right? You would just go back to the original settings, right? Uh, just some, uh, you know, quick things to mention. And we also have F of, um, F of negative eight, right? Let's see what that is. Okay. You should also try to input into the Excel itself, okay? because your first, first project is based on this, six times, okay, and then three times negative eight. So here you put in negative eight, there's no confusion, right? So this is okay, Excel understand it properly, you give you the right result. But if you feel like you wanna put an extra parentheses for negative eight, that's fine, right? That's totally fine. You will still get a right result. And the only thing is when you open parentheses, you need to close it. 
So open one, close one, open one, close one. Okay, then we get that. Right? If you do not put a parentheses here, same result come up, right? And no confusion here. Okay, so this is question number one. Question number two. So we get g of x, um, which is equal to five times two x minus one and divide by x, n minus four. Okay, so this is the input for g of x. Now we need to calculate a couple of things, g of zero, meaning x becomes zero. So here replace x with a zero. So right here we have five times two times zero minus one divided by zero and minus four. This is the proper input. So division size is slash, right? Slash representing division. And if you hit enter, what do you notice? You get this output here, not, a, not an actual number, right? What this means is division by zero. And division by zero, it's undefined, right? From the undefined, meaning results is undefined. So if you see anything like that, number div slash zero, and this factorial sign, then this means um, it's division by zero because x becomes zero. So we're dividing this whole thing by zero, so it's undefined. Professor, I have a question. Sure, sure. If you were to do this problem on paper, wouldn't you get um, zero over zero, which is one? Like, wouldn't your answer be one? No, zero over zero is undefined. So anything over zero is undefined. Oh, okay, okay. So quickly review this algebra things. Yeah, any number divided by zero will be zero, will be, will be undefined, yeah. Any number by zero, right? Zero by zero is undefined. One by zero undefined, right? As soon as the denominator is zero, it's undefined. Uh, uh, question two, part one, and then part two is g of negative four. G of negative four. Okay, and then we put column here. All right, so now replace x with negative four. Okay, so we get a five equal sign first, five times open parentheses, two times negative four, and minus one, close it, and divide by negative four, and minus four. Okay, and let's do it, right? 7.25. And if you put in a parentheses for negative numbers, you get the same result. 7.25, right? So totally up to you, you know, these parentheses are not required, but uh, if you feel like, you know, you like that kind of input better, you can do that, okay. So, so for mm -hmm. Professor, these yeah. assignments, yep. um, if it's, we have to put all this information on the Excel sheet, even if we are like doing the, the work on paper, no, actually, yes, you have to show all this work in the Excel. Okay. You have to get a full credit. That's why all I right. show you all the work right now. So you just follow the same format and get it done in Excel. Okay. Uh -huh. And I will post this solution. No worry. I'll post this solution after I complete it in the in the Excel. I mean in a in a black ball. So you can just if you forget how to input it, you can just use it as use it as a reference. All right. And this also help you understand some basic operations in Excel. So, you know, um, later on when we do some calculation, you don't have to keep going back, you know, keep um, doing research on how to input that. You already understand it and learning in this project. Okay. <clears throat> And let's look at question three. So question three, we have a 
again, it's a long algebra expression. So we got equal to two times a negative four times three X minus two and divide by five X and, and close the parentheses here, you know, you need to put five X in the parentheses. And that's the first part of the expression, adding nine divided by four X minus one, not adding one, plus one. Okay. And that's, and then let's do the calculate the result H of negative two. Okay. So H, so putting equal signs, so whenever you see X, X becomes negative two. Okay, so we start with the two times and negative four times, and we get a three times, and the first value is negative two, okay, times negative two, and then minus two. And then dividing by, open parentheses, five times negative two. Okay, close it. Now you see, <clears throat> this red parentheses is closed by this red parentheses. So this one is closed and you see the black one is not closed yet. So we need to close that. That complete uh, the first part. And plus nine divided by four, four times um, negative two and adding one. Okay. And that should be the proper input. And you hear enter, you get a result. Right, so that, that's the result. And here, you know, if let's say, when you look at a formula, you wanna make a wider, you know, cell, you could do that. You could just enlarge it, right? Drag it and then make it larger size. And also uh, this result has so many decimal places. If let's say you wanna run it to two decimal places, you, the shortcut is you can just click on decrease decimal. So you go down to two decimal, right? And another way of doing this more general way is by applying the setting. So click on a cell and right click on the, on, on, the, on the mouse and this will come up, format cells. Now within this little windows, right? You're gonna see number, so here we can run it to two decimal places. So that's one way um, you can do that and run to, to the proper amount of decimal places you need. And I will call, also you can change alignment of this, right? You can change alignment to that. You know, a lot of things you could format here. You can change the font size, font style, different things. You can change border style. And also fit in different colors, right? For that particular, you know, you see, you can fit in different colors here. So that's a lot of things you could do here um, about changing the settings on the, of formatting the particular cell or format the entire colon, something like that. Okay, here we go. So I run into three decimal places. So H of three. So very similar, um, we start with the two times open parentheses, negative four, multiply by three times three minus two. Okay, and divide by open parentheses, five times three. Close that, close the big parentheses and divide, I'm, I'm adding nine divide by four times three, adding one. Let's do it, right? And your result will come up as that. So similarly, let's say you want to format multiple cells, you could highlight those two cells, right? Highlight those two cells and then open, right click on it. You have a format cells and go to numbers. And again, we want to run it to three decimal places. Okay, click on OK. Then both of them will apply the same um, setting. Okay, 
And this is question three, question four. So now uh, we move on to exponent. Okay, this one is exponent with the base e. Okay, so this is e raised to x squared minus one. Okay, and e is, okay, let me just do a quick explanation on e. Uh, it's I own a number. It's named after Swedish mathematician Iola, right? So this is the name of a mathematician. And E is approximately equal to 2.718, right? And then it has infinitely many decimal places. And E is also called natural number. And it has a very important application in finance in a lot of different areas in biology. Um, I think, um, let me just give you an example. So if you heard of term continuous compounding, continuous compounding, they use in the base E, meaning if it's the, the interest is compounding continuously, then it's the it's expon exponential function with the base E okay, to, to capture the um, continuous compounding uh, financial transaction. Okay. Um, Yep, so this is natural number. So E is approximately 2.718, right? It has, and E is very similar to pi, right? It has infinitely many decimal places. So now we want to calculate H of two. Okay. That means we're gonna do, put an equal sign right first, and then EXP, open parentheses. So E raised to this power is input as EXP. EXP representing exponent exponential function with the base E and I open parentheses. So we don't need this exponent side, right? It's replaced by this um, expression. Okay. And X is two, so it's two square minus one. EXP open parentheses two to the second minus one. Then you hit enter. You get that, right? So it's 20 something, 20.0855-3692. And if you look at H of negative five. So similarly, uh, you replace um, X with the negative five. So right here, negative five, I put into parentheses. Okay, raised to second power, N minus one. Okay. You're gonna see a, a fairly large number. So it's 200, uh, let's see, 26 billion, right? 489 million, 122,130. Okay, that'll be the result for that. So this is question four. So far, any questions? So number five, f of x is equal to five times x raised hey, to professor can you go back i like you're going really fast i need yeah i just want to see what that says because let me just take a picture of it okay sure so you can take a look at the formula Thank first. You. and also when i when i finish showing this i will save it as a as excel file and i will also upload it to the blackboard so you'll be able to uh, use it as a reference later Ooh. would you just be able to go a little bit slower you're going really fast Okay, okay, uh, yeah, I will try to go slow. Yeah. Is the class recorded? Yes, it is. So we can just go back and look, like if you're going fast, we can just go Definitely. back and record it and watch it. We will post the recording in the afternoon. I have to produce it um, to the YouTube and then I will post it afterwards. Yeah, so every, um, except your exam, right? Your exam, you don't, we don't have to recall that. But all the lecture, you know, every Monday class will be will be recorded. I'll post the recording um, in the afternoon usually. Okay. Um, I have a really quick question as well. Okay, sure thing. Um, is Go this ahead. like this isn't the homework, right? Or is that an that's another sheet of of problems, or is this what we're submitting for the homework for the first Excel? Uh, no, you are submitting the other file. Uh, okay. This cool. is demonstration. All right. That's, uh, that's, the, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you also, need this, right? I will show you where 
Yeah, so after the demo, you can go to the Excel project sub submission and open this Excel project number one. You are working on that, okay, for, for today and then next week. Awesome, and thank you. By next Monday, right, okay. Also, do we have to submit it in a certain like format for you to be able to see our work or do we just submit it as is? As Excel, as an Excel file, I'll be able to see it. Yep. So I'm using Google Sheets, is that okay? You don't have, uh, it's better using the Excel program. It's making Good. me purchase it, should we purchase uh, it? No, 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 no. If that's so is Google Sheets okay? I use the Google Sheet, yeah. Okay. I could, I have put the wrong Excel oh, for free. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so I guess. I think you can get it for free if you are an FIT student. Exactly, I think I heard of, heard of that too. Um, I guess you could just, yeah, download a free version and then use that because you, you're going to need it for other math courses or maybe for any other, you know, courses require Excel, you know. So it's better using the Excel program itself instead of a Google spreadsheet because that's a little conversion issue. They are very identical, but uh, 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 sometimes, you know, you couldn't open the Google spreadsheet in a, in a certain, you know, computers, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So figure out how to download it for free, right? Maybe contact the FIT tech support. To uh, get the free version, you just use your FIT email and FIT password when it asks you to sign in. Oh, great. Thank you so much. That's, that's very helpful. <laughs> um, for your classmates. All right. Very good. So you take it, we take care of that. So now let's just continue. Let's just finish up really quickly. So, um, yep. so this is question five. So again, it's exponent. So this X raised to three X minus two, three X minus two. Okay. So now first thing we do is replace X with a zero. Okay, we're talking about F of zero. So right here, put an equal sign first, five times zero, right? X becomes zero, zero raised to three times zero and minus two. Okay. Yeah, so whenever you see X, X becomes zero, X becomes zero. Okay. And this multiplication size is needed. Otherwise, the Excel wouldn't execute, right? If you forget to put this multiplication sign, your result will be totally off, okay? And then you just hit enter, right? And then this one again is division by zero. So it's division by zero. Again, so this is undefined. So this is f of zero um, because zero raised to this negative two power, um, zero cannot raise to negative powers, right? I can show you why this is not working. Uh, for example, you have zero to negative second power. So you become, make your fraction, right? And I flip to the bottom, you become one over zero square. And it becomes one over zero. And that's why it's undefined. That's why you get that result undefined. Okay. Because of this reason. And go back here. Okay, then um, H of negative one, F of negative one, right? So that's the next thing f of negative one. So similarly, replace x with negative one. So five multiplied by, you see the negative one I put into, I will put into the parentheses to avoid any miscalculation. Open parentheses three times negative one minus two. Okay. The result should be negative five. Okay. Uh, that's how you input it. The result is negative five. Okay. Any question on this? 
Okay, question six. So um, we have k of x equal to nine times 3.25 raised to five x minus one. And first, first thing we're gonna calculate k of negative three. So here replace x with negative three. So it's nine times 3.25 raised to um, five multiplied by negative three and minus one. Okay. And t answer, right? Let's give you the result. You should also try this on your on your Excel program so you get familiar with the input. Um, it also help you to complete your actual project. So here it goes. And then this result turned out to be 5.8091. This E, and this is the same thing as saying 5.8091 multiplied by 10 to negative eight power. That's what it means. Okay. So this is a scientific notation, right? E is 10 raised to minus OA, meaning negative eight power. If you want to turn into actual number, you would do a format, right? Format cells and go back here, click on number. You want to turn to, uh, let's say 15 decimal places, or maybe it's a little less, right? Yes. 13 decimal places, it becomes decimal numbers. So this is just another thing you may encounter, right? So for a fairly large number or, or a really small number, Excel will show you as a scientific notation. So you need to do the conversion if you want to see the decimal answers. Okay. And K of five. Sorry, how do we do the decimals? Okay, uh, all right, let me just go back really quickly and show you one more time. Okay, this is scientific notation, format cells. Okay, well, when this window pop up, you click on number, and then here, increase the decimal places until you see some numbers, right? So let's say you want 11 decimal places or 12 decimal places, then you become a, a decimal numbers, here you go. And if you convert this to scientific notation, you get exactly this, right? 5.8091 times 10 to negative eighth power. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, right? Exactly. So, yeah, okay, no problem. Okay, K of five. All right, so one more time, we just need to replace X with five. All right, so we will be doing we input nine times 3.25 and raised to five times five minus one. And this one, you get a, you get a huge number, right? We expect to get a huge number. Here we go. So this is 1.73557 um, times 10 to 10 raised to 13th power, right? So it's a very, very large number. And again, in order to turn into actual number, you need to do format cells under numbers, and you want to show as this, right? Okay, I guess um, just one decimal is okay. So this is actual number once you apply the format. Okay, it's a huge number. Okay, any question on this? So you want um, actual numbers for the project? Yes, right? actual number, please. Yes, um, if you wanna just show some decimal answers, right? Yeah, just um, like this one, if you don't wanna show too many decimal, that's okay. Two, three decimal is fine, right? Maybe three decimal just, but uh, for the actual number like this, you should expand it, right? Like make it an actual number. Yeah, okay. 
that'll be that'll be better. Yeah. Okay, and then um, question seven. All right, so we have a linear equation f of x. Uh, we call this linear function, right? f of x equal negative two, uh, negative two point five x plus twenty five point six. Okay. So in order to graph a linear equation on a straight line, we need some order pairs, right? So here we're gonna create some order pairs. So start with the x value, and then we find out f of x, right? The y value basically. F of x is the same thing as y value. So now I guess I'm using five order pair because the question asks us to uh, have five order pair. Now pay attention, right? I'm gonna show you some techniques you can utilize here to generate this. Um, I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna create it as a table or borders. Now, first thing is I'm gonna show you a way to generating this um, x values. So let's say you need to generate a lot of x values. Instead of five, but uh, maybe hundred x value, and this this could be very useful. For example, you could pick x value as one, two, right? Can we do that? One, two, three, four, five. That's fine, right? You can pick any x value you want. So now watch. Just once you put in the first couple numbers, now you see the red box. I mean the green box coming up. I put a cursor on the bottom right hand corner. When you see a solid clause, then you start dragging that. Now here you go. Excel will generate a number for you. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's x value you you have right here. Okay. Uh, so this is one way to generate in the x values. Another way, let's say you wanna you don't want to have a natural number. Let's say you want to have a num uh, the gap between the number is five. So you start with a zero, next number will be five, next number will be 10. So it's an in increment of five. So now once you put in the first couple of numbers, similarly, you um, put a cursor on the bottom right hand corner. When you see a solid clause, then drag it. And you get 10, 15, 20. See that? So this is one way to um, generating the, the, the numbers using the using the pattern. Okay. So now we get these five numbers. Now we need to calculate the y values for f of x. So now a couple of things I want to mention is here slope is I'm gonna define the slope here. Slope is negative two point negative two point five. Okay. All right. I'm gonna put in the box just to make sure you know we are following this. And also, the, what is y-intercept here? Anybody could answer that? What is y-intercept here? B. Is it nope. 25.6? Exactly. Very good. Very good. 25.6. Right. Okay. Perfect. So now we define this. Now in order to calculate the f of zero. We do this, right? We will put in the equal sign here. Now um, we're gonna use the slope. Okay, but think about this. We're gonna use in the same slope, right? To calculate the result for all five cells here. So now I want you to do this. You put a dollar sign in front of the D, put a dollar sign in front of 31. And this operation basically just lock the cell, meaning for the upcoming calculation, Excel will always go back to cell D31 for slope, right? And then multiply by this cell A32 to get the X values. Now um, put a addition, right? Adding the B value. Now similarly, click on cell D32 now we're gonna do a absolute reference. We call this absolute reference. You can also view that as locking the cell. When you put a dollar sign in front of the colon, in front of the row number, and we get that. And this operation is called absolute reference. Okay. Now once we do one of them, watch. Then get a result, right? 
putting zero, we expect to get 25.6. Now, you only need to calculate one of them. Once we do apply the absolute reference, now when you see a solid clause dragging now, you're gonna get all the results at once. You see, Excel will always go back to D31 for the slope, D32 for the y-intercept. So this is this will bring a lot of convenience if you have a if you have to apply the same um, sales to multiple calculations, then using the absolute reference def definitely help you save time. Okay. All right, here we go. So we get all these different numbers, right? And this is what we call the absolute reference. The technical name is absolute reference using the dollar sign, right? How would you drag all of them so they get the answers? Um, you mean, can we check the result? Is that the question? Like you dragged it. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, maybe let me do it one more time. Let me delete all of this. Okay, so um, delete that, delete that. First of all, you click on the cell D B32, okay. Once you go there, you see the green box come up. Now you put a cursor on the bottom right-hand corner right here. And once you see the solid cross, then you drag it down to B36. Now this all these results come up by itself. Under the condition we are using the absolute reference, right? You have to apply the absolute reference. Otherwise, this result will be totally off. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Okay, any other questions on this? Uh, so this is a little, you know, technical. So I would really want you to learn this because this will provide a lot of convenience for the future projects. Okay, make sure you know how to do this, right? Very important. Also like generating the numbers based on your will, based on your needs, right? Although five numbers is not a big deal, right? What if you want to, you need to generate a thousand numbers? Now you just have to put in a couple numbers, then you can generate it just by dragging it, right? That's very convenient and very effective as well. Okay, so now we get all of this, now we can start plotting this. So this will require some in uh, graphing, right? So go to insert. Now, first thing you do is go to scatter plot, right? So we're going to apply a scatter plot and with the line. Yeah, here you go. Pick the second one, right? Under the scatter and pick the second one. And this line will come up. Here you go. So we get this straight line. Okay. So now once you have the straight line, maybe we can do a couple more things. You see this plus sign on the, on the top right-hand corner? Click on that. And something we can do is so you can put in the axis title if you want to. If there's a title for x axis on the y axis, we can put in a title, right? Uh, maybe just put in x, right? Because it represents x. No, um, y axis. This is representing f of x. Okay. Yeah, and the axis, x axis representing x, right? You can do that. Chart title. Um, if you want to put in the equation itself, you could do that negative two point five x. Okay, uh, maybe put multiplication sign and adding twenty five point six. Okay, all right, and you can do a lot of things, right? Uh, you can pick a design here. Let's say you don't like this design, you want to pick this one. Yeah, you can do that, right? And what else we can do? We can also get rid of the gray lines, right? It's gone. Okay. Um, also, go go to trend line here, and then go down here. Uh, click on more options, and we are feeding a linear model here, right? Because the linear equation, so it's a linear model. That's good. And if you want to display the equation on the chart, you can do that. You see, it will show you the equation here. Okay, now it match with the, our original equation. That means we generating the right numbers for both x value and the y value. So these all the pairs are valid. And then this equation matches with the, our given equations. 
which is good, right? And then also you can fit in different colors, you know, put in change the setting here and put in, apply the different settings according to your presentation. If you need to present this, um, yeah. There are a lot of things, right? You can play around with it. Um, sometimes if you want to present your project to your supervisor or maybe to your superiors or maybe to just to, to your entire class, you know, you want to make sure your project stands out. So apply some settings to, to make it stylish, right? That helps. Okay. So that's how you graph this. Any question on this? Can you um, show us how you did the y equals mm -hmm. on the graph? Uh -huh. Oh, you got how to get that, right? So again, you click on the plus sign here, then you see trend line will come up, right? Select the last option, trend line. Now, follow direction arrow here. And underneath it, you see more options. Open it, right? Click on it. And now this menu will come up. And the way how, how I get that is I, I check the display equation on chart. And then equation will come up, you see? Now I, I put another one here. But we don't need the extra one. I'm gonna delete one of them. Yep. Okay. I guess I delete the whole thing. All right. Yep. That's how you get it. Okay. Thank you. I have a Mac, so it's a little different. Oh yeah, yeah. Mac is yeah. different. Okay. For Mac, I I have a Mac, but I barely use it though. <laughs> so, um, but it's there, right? Um, maybe later. Yeah, I found on, it. You found it. Very good, very good, perfect. But yeah, Mac is slightly, slightly different from Windows. So it takes some time to learn it. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so I guess that's pretty much everything once um, you'll be able to complete your project number one. So again, your actual project is this. You will find it under the Excel project submission, right? and go to Excel project submission in the Blackboard course and open this file, Excel project number one. And I guess if you can finish today, that's fine. And um, if you cannot finish by today, it's due by next Monday. Okay, so you can get it done by next Monday, no problem. I'll give you some time to complete it next Monday. And then right now, I'm gonna put all of you guys in the breakout room. So the good thing about a breakout room is you're gonna uh, stay in a room by yourself, but if you need individual attention or individual help from me, I'll be able to join your breakout room and I could talk to you on an individual basis. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. So very good. So today you just need to, if you can finish the project number one, that'll be great. But if you cannot finish it, get it done by next Monday, right? I'll give you I will set aside some time for you to complete it next Monday. All right, so now I will open a breakout room for everybody. Professor? Yeah, sure, go ahead. For the project, are the equations on that dock? Yes, I think so. If you cannot, again, if you cannot um, see, let me know. I can, I can shoot, you can take the screenshot of, if, if let's say your worth file doesn't work, then let me know, right? I can show you, I can um, give you the screenshot. You can just take the screenshot of my file and then start working on it. Thank you. Okay, no problem. All right, any other question before I put you in the breakout room? All right, good to go. So you can just join the breakout room and just, again, you can ask me questions, right? On an individual basis, you know, which is better off. Oh, open all rooms. Okay. Hey, Ryan. Hello. Yep. Hey, 
so yeah. um yes yeah, the math excel thing so usually i mm -hmm. go to your um course and in the course guide, I'll click the link for the math Excel. Yeah, don't worry. Let me double check really quickly. So you go to, can you see the screen right now? One second. Okay. Yes. Okay, very good. So let me just sign in really quickly. And then let me just uh, take a look at your account. And typically you should have no problem at all. See if you are there right now. Okay. You go by the same name on the yeah, right there, Jacob Ryan. Yeah, 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 right. You got it. So yeah, so you complete the orientation session. Yeah, so it will be the same, it will be the same login, right? Every time you log into the map Excel, but just just make sure you go to this website, right? Mathexcel.com. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. All right. Hey, Rebecca. Hello, Professor. How are you? All right, good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Um, I don't really have any questions in particular. I just had to uh, re-download Excel onto my desktop today. But um, so we have time on Wednesday to do this, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I just want to double check, you know, with you on the on your Map Excel account. Uh -huh. so I checked this morning. You were you were successfully registered, so you're good. So, okay. Yeah, and then you completed assignment number one actually, orientation session with hundred percent. Yeah. So this is all within your account. So every time you know you try to log into the homework system, just go mm -hmm. to this website, right? Okay. www.mapexcel.com, and your right. login name, put in your username, and password, and you should be able to log in with no problem. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, double check it, you know, before the end of the class. If you should, right. if you, let me know. Um, we, we oh, that wasn't me who talked in the beginning of class with no. the question. That was someone else. <laughs> okay. Oh, so I misunderstood. <laughs> oh, no, you're okay. fine. I, I heard you say Rebecca at the beginning of class when you were talking to them. And I was like, oh, I'm not the one asking the question. <laughs> okay, okay, <I> but <laughs> uh, but okay. thank you so much. <laughs> no, problem, no problem. I'm glad it works out for you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Talk to you later. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Okay.
Hey, Nail. Hi, Professor. Um, I just wanted to share my screen and just make sure I'm mm -hmm. doing the right thing. Definitely, go ahead, yeah. So this is what I have for the first one so far. Yes, um, click on cell B5. Uh, Let me see the formula, just, yeah, very good. Yeah, this is perfect. You're doing okay. good so far, yes. I think I think I'll have to look back because I was a little confused with the like five ordered pairs. Okay, no worry. I will post a solution um, on the blackboard right now. Let me save it. Okay, yeah, that would be great because I feel like I have a good grasp at everything else. Mm -hmm. No worry. Um, I'm gonna save it right now. And then, do you mind if I type the next problem in, and you could just make sure that it's right before okay. I let you. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Quickly. Sure thing. Sure thing. So I'm posting that right now. Okay. Let's do this. Um, Solution. Um, and if you could just let me know if this is how I type the equation in right, that would be great. Give me one second. Let me just post yeah, this no problem. Really, really quickly. And then I'll look at your input. Okay. And so the solution is up. Let me show you where that is. It's right underneath the, the lab one practice. But then let me okay. share the screen with you. So okay. Can, yeah. So let me share that. Here go, so right, right here, right? Here you go. Um, yeah. Okay, okay, you can see it right now. And then, the solution. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's a solution, exactly. Okay, okay, so, yeah. Uh, show your screen right now, let me take um, it. Okay. Yeah. This is my second equation. Yeah, sure, go ahead, and then uh, type in the- Okay. Yeah. Um, or I guess G2. Okay. And then, equals um, three shift two plus, oh, plus five mm -hmm. divided by two plus five. Perfect. Is that, is that right? Yes, that's perfect. Oh, okay, great. Okay, I just wanted to like, you know, make sure I was on the right track. Great job. Keep up the goal. Thank you so much for help. Okay. Hey. Hi. Um, I had a question about number three. Okay. Sure thing. So would I put a parenthesis around two x divided by five? Okay. Uh, Nigora, right? That's your yes. question. Okay, Nigora, can you share your screen so I can help you out? Can you see it? No, I cannot see it. Oh. Yet. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. Uh, I don't, um, multiple. Yeah, how about now? Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's great. Perfect. Okay, so you're working on question three, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I was just wondering if I'm supposed to put like a parenthesis around it. Okay, let me double check the input. I forget the question three. Oh, yeah, I should have like shared the whole screen. Sorry, no, I, I can open my, I have another computer open. I can look it up really quickly. No worry, you don't have to. Okay, let me look at it. Okay, thank you. Okay, no worry. 
So yes, you you have the right input. Um okay, just so it looks correct. Yes, just for the second part after seven, right? Uh-huh. We put another parenthesis. Okay. And also for two X, you should put in the parentheses for both of them, right? Put two X in the parentheses. Right, when you input it. Otherwise, the Excel will just divide by two. And yeah. after that, multiply by whatever X value is. Okay, that makes That'll sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very Thank good. you so much. No problem. Okay, great. Hey, Neil. Hi, sorry. Yeah, I just want to um, clear up something quickly. I was um, another, your, your other classmate. <laughs> so I couldn't join you right away. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just a little. Okay, so mm -hmm. for this, do I just write undefined next to it? Yeah, definitely. That's perfect. Okay, and then does this look correct? Because um, I, I, I feel like I didn't put in this correctly. Um, click on the the number, I mean, the cell itself, yeah. Um, you should put a parenthesis for two times negative two. The last part, yeah, putting parentheses. So same part. with over here too. Yeah, so it should be 29.2. Uh, yeah, you're right. Like that? No, that's right. That should do it. So okay, so eight. whenever so whenever I'm dividing something, I should always just put parentheses? No, if it is single number, that's okay. Oh. It is not single number, it's two times a number. So uh, if you forget to put a parenthesis, Excel will just divide by two. After that, you multiply by the number, which is okay. not the case, right? Okay, got it. And then okay. when you do e to an exponent, mm -hmm. do you have to write exp? Yes, you have to. That's okay. Mention for the Excel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming and helping no again. No problem. No problem. Anytime. Yeah. Okay. Hello, professor. Hello, professor. Can I ask you something? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. Um, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can I? So for the eighth, we only have to submit the project, right? Not the practice. Yeah, just the actual project, not a project. Okay, yes. and then we get, we have for the eleven math excels. So. Yeah, you mean the homework? Yeah. Yeah, the homework. Let me see. Homework for um for first one is due by. Okay, I think it's yeah, it's February eleventh, right? That's for chapter one. Yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah. I had a question about the Euler numbers. How do I say Euler? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I Can remember. it be a yeah. negative? I own a number. Yeah. The result cannot be yeah. negative, right? It has to be. It cannot. Positive. Okay. Yeah. Because any exponent has to be positive, right? Okay. Uh, and that's, okay. yeah, because the base is positive. So it has to be positive. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Have a lovely week. Okay. You too. All right.
Hey, now. Hi, I'm sorry. I'm just really confused with the whole exponent. Um, okay, no problem. I'm down here right now. Uh, yeah, click on it. And then, yeah, so um, get rid of that exponent, exponent sign, right? Yeah, and then open parentheses. Yeah, and then close it. That's it. So no exponent. Uh, I know this one is a little bit uh, tricky because it's exponent, but uh, we, we're not supposed to put exponent sign. Okay, and then, so is this, so I wrote, did I write this correctly? You mean, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Just put two x minus one in parentheses. Okay, and then um, for the rounding, do you mind just like refreshing me? I need to round this number. Do you mind just telling me how to do that again? Yeah, sure. So uh, right click on it. Uh, no, um, he enter, enter first. Oh. On, the, on the mouse, right click on it. Wait. Uh, I'm on a MacBook. I'm not sure if that has to do with it. Oh, okay. So then um, you go to uh, go up to data on top. You see data? Yeah. Okay. No, not there. Okay. Maybe, uh, maybe view. View. Yeah. No. Maybe review. Click on review. Where? Oh. Yeah. So let me see if this. No, not there though. Hmm. Go to go back to home. Okay. Now, if you want, um, one way to do this is you see this on top. You see this uh, point zero zero, and then you have a direction arrow point zero. That's how you um. Oh, these. The amount of decimal. Yeah. If you click on that, you decrease amount of decimal. Okay. So if I, okay. So that's a shortcut to do that. Like that? Did yep. you see how it just... Yeah, so if you want to keep it as three, yeah, that would be good. 13. So it's supposed to just be three uh, three decimal points, well, right? three, it's okay, yeah. Either, either, either one you like. Okay, so exactly. what about this one? This one is okay, leave as is. Leave it's as is. Yeah. So right now, should I not really worry about how long the decimal is? Yeah, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind, yeah. That would, okay. shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I'll just, yeah. yeah, I'll focus on the work right now and yeah. figure out how to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you so much okay. again. Nail, so you don't have the Excel program. So you are using- This the, is the, I actually uh, was able, the girl, uh, what she said was right. You use your FIT login info, it works for Excel. Okay, perfect. So I'm in Excel, I'm in the real program. Okay, perfect. Um, the only thing is uh, typically when we right click on it, a drop down menu will come up. Mm. And then we'll be able to click on format sales. Yeah, I don't know why that's not yeah. popping maybe up for me. Because it's a newer version. Mm. So maybe somewhere else. Um, but for now, yeah, if you want to change the decimal, use the shortcut. Okay. That, that's the same thing. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries. Yeah, no problem. Okay.
All right, guys, uh, something really quick. So I post the solution for the for the lab demonstration this morning um, under the uh, Excel practice. So if you need to use it as a reference, go ahead to do that. You can just open the file. And, uh, and class is over. Um, I talk to you guys next Monday. Okay, have stay warm. Have a nice week. Bye bye. Thank you. Um, Thank you as well. Okay, Thank bye. you, Professor. Bye. Um, professor, can you hear me? Yeah, definitely. Sure. Um, so this is Asma. I tried to join earlier, but it didn't let me join. I sent you an email, so it's like I'm not absent. I just joined late. Yeah, no worries, Asma. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Professor.